But in the beginning, iron men and wooden ships, a few intrepid aeronauts, and flying machines that challenged the imagination, but little else. The technology that eventually conquered time and distance didn't exist at the turn of the century. Flight itself was the problem. But even at this early date, 1923, they weren't the first to try. Daredevil aviators had already made the first known crew transfer and flight back in 21. But their methods left much to be desired. With a five-gallon can of Avgas strapped to his back, Wesley May climbed from the wing of a Lincoln Standard up to the wing skid of a JN4. He worked his way to the Jenny's engine, unstrapped the can, and poured gas into the tank. And it should come as a surprise to practically no one that this pioneering technique did not attract a very wide following. First actual transfer of gas, June 27, 1923. Two hookups, 75 gallons, and six hours, 39 minutes of continuous flight. The first demonstration of a workable air-to-air -air refueling system was in the books. It wasn't until the development of the A-bomb, the end of the hot war, and the start of the cold that we moved ahead once again. SAC determined it was absolutely essential that we be able to hit any target, anywhere, from any base at any time. And air-to-air -air refueling, the only answer. And once again, flight refueling called in, this time 1948, to convert 100 B-29s as receivers, another 60 as tankers. At the same time, Wright Field given the go-ahead to develop an improved system. Flight refueling's job, develop a special system for fighters and probe and drogue the solution. A simple hose with basket or drogue at one end. When a thirsty fighter approached, the hose was reeled out, the fighter flying its probe directly into the basket for a hookup. Now, the drogue couldn't offload as quickly as the boom, but probe and drogue would permit simultaneous refuelings, three at one time, and greater flexibility in rough air.